Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the adaptation dynamics in coastal delta cities with the two case studies of Ho Chi Minh cities and Tokyo lowlands areas. So, can you hear me clearly? Okay, how about now? Okay, great. So, <laughs> uh, coastal delta cities are very important for the human settlement development near the coastline. And um, this was developed thanks to the um, fertile soil, strategic ports, or access to fresh water. And however, these cities are the most, among the most at risk to flooding um, be because of the lack of the drainage system in some of these cities, uh, rapid land subsidence, and also sea level rise as well. So, okay, my slide is not moving. Okay, great. So the case studies I'm working on is Ho Chi Minh cities and Tokyo lowlands areas. Both of these uh, cities experience land subsidence and land subsidence can be taken as a proxy for sea level rise because it is among the most, one of the most important driver of local sea level rise. Many cities in the Delta areas experience the rate of land subsidence is even uh, double the rate of global mean sea level rise. So um, first case study is Ho Chi Minh City. 65% of Ho Chi Minh City has an elevation lower than 1.5 meter. However, the uh, uh, high tide level is 1.57 meters. So the city has already experienced um, flooding from high tide several times per year. And the accumulated land subsidence in Ho Chi Minh City is, is between 0.4 to 0.5 meter. Um, and because of this land subsidence, um, together with the heavy rains and also high tide, the cities has been ex experiencing flooding several times per year. 17% of the city is projected to be inundated until one meter of sea level rise. And Ho Chi Minh City is now at the early stage of adapting and implementing adaptation measures to um, flooding. The second case study is, is uh, Tokyo lowlands area. Tokyo experienced severe land subsidence back into the uh, 1910s to the 1970s. The lowest point experienced up to 4.57 meter uh, in Kotoku Ward in uh, Tokyo. The severe land subsidence result in the uh, area that is currently below the mean sea levels in Tokyo. 5% of the uh, most important urban areas is a 25 wards area is actually below the low tide. 25% of these area are below the high tide, and in total, 41% of the uh, 20 word, uh, 23 word areas are below the high tides. Currently, 1.6 million people are living in these lowland areas, and the government has been implementing a series of adaptation measures to protect these lowland areas from flooding. So you can see from picture on the left is the water pole in Koto Ward that's showing the uh, water level of the Arakawa River. You can see that it's way, it can sometimes up to my neck or sometimes it's even above my height too. Uh, on the picture on the right, you can see that the community on the right side, on the land side of the dike, um, the first floor is actually below the water level of the river, which is the Alakawa River in this case. So um, currently, in the case of Ho Chi Minh City, both the uh, government and the residents are adapting to frequent flooding. Um, flooding has been experiencing, uh, people has been experiencing flooding several times per year. Um, the main reason is the uh, heavy rains and also from high tides. Average flood duration is up to three hours. And the average flood level is from the ankle level to the knee level and has, has been causing um, negative impacts on the household uh, or on the people livelihoods. The government implemented two big projects, which is a drainage improvement plan funded by JICA from Japan from 2001. And the other project is a project uh, planned by the Ministry of Agricultural and Rural uh, Development Plan. It was developed in uh, 2008 and revised in 2012. And both, well, in general, the, the major focus is, uh, is on the hard engineering adaptation measures. Uh, which including raising roads, building pump stations, dike, and floodgates. However, uh, both of these projects, not much has been completed. For the first project, uh, it was implemented in 2001. Um, less than 50% of the project is, uh, implement, is completed. And for the second project, only a small segment of it is currently being implemented. 
the government encountered a lack of financial resource. The allocated budget only covered one third of the uh, estimated cost for the Im implementation measures. And the rest of the cost depends on the um, investment or donation from the uh, international funding or from the private sectors. However, uh, there have been uh, or discussing that the adaptation measures, the flooding adaptation measures is more like a public service facilities. So it don't really uh, create revenues. So it's hard for them to call for uh, investment from private sectors. Besides, there's also other obstacles or uh, barriers in implementation, such as the outdated design or the lack of, or the insu insufficient consideration of uh, climate change and land subsidence for the, inside the city. And there's also a conflict of land acquisitions, is, which has remained as a uh, major challenge in uh, implementing the adaptation measures as well. Regarding the formal informal adaptation, which is uh, measures implemented by the uh, residents or at the household level, well, there's a different measures such as using a sandbag, building barriers, but the most um, common measures is raising floors. So um, residents in Ho Chi Minh City has raised their floor, um, well, quite higher to, to the original street to cope with flooding. Some, some houses raised their floor even one meter higher than the original level. Um, however, there's a conflict in a flooding adaptation in the case of Ho Chi Minh City as well. When the, res when the government raised the road from 1.3 to 1.7 meter higher, but there's a lack of coordination with the residents or the support for the residents. So um, the residents also have to adapt to this raising road. Some of them have enough financial resource, so re they rebuild the house to a new level or they just raise the floor, which we, you can see on the picture on the right corner, up right corner, some houses raise the floor, but they don't have enough resources to rebuild a new house, so the house remain very low ceiling. And the other residents actually cannot, uh, do not have enough uh, financial resources to adapt, so they remain lower, which they still um, suffer from exa exacerbated flooding in this case. In the case of Tokyo uh, lowlands, so in the past, because it happens in the past from 1910s or 1970s, the government implemented a series of different adaptation measures um, but after the extreme event, or in this case is the um, storm surge event or typhoon. First, the government built the um, dike and then upgraded the dike after uh, the higher level of water, um, higher water level coming from the storm surge or the typhoon. You can see in here, um, they have the, uh, in this picture, there's a mark of different levels that the dike was upgraded to the high, uh, height of the uh, typhoon that happened in, in the case of Tokyo. And uh, from the 1970s to 1980s, the government also reclaimed land. The part of this was lost to the sea due to a land subsidence and also uh, flooding events uh, in the past. And they also reclaimed the other land from the, from the sea as well to the um, higher level, to the uh, uh, high water level, the design water level in the case of uh, Tokyo, which is uh, around five meter. And the current approach uh, that the government is implementing is a super levy approach. So the lowland areas is currently protected by the um, different measures, flooding adaptation measures at the dike, uh, pumping uh, stations and floodgates. Uh, but in the case of the dike failures, um, Tokyo lowlands can be flooded for two weeks. And there's lack of evacuation center for the total population in this area as well. So the super levy was proposed in the 1980s to tackle this risk. And um, you can see the super levy is a very wide dike with the land side is elevated. Um, and the, wide, the width of the dike is up to 30 times the height of the dike. And the so residents, the houses and the community will be built on top of the land, slide, uh, the land side of the dike. So uh, the project, the original project was, was with a very large scale up to 873 kilometer. And, uh, but um, and this project was uh, gained a lot of opposals and op opinions from taxpayers as well. So it was terminated in 2010, but then was resumed in 2011 after the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. And the plan were revised down to 120 kilometers, focusing on the most densely populated area in the low-lying areas in Tokyo. 
there's a different discussion on um, this super levy approach. Many people, well, some people agree with the approach, but some residents or some other scholars disagree with it, thinking it's unnecessary because of the cost and the time. The original plan might take 400 years to uh, complete it, and around 12 trillion Japanese yen, which is roughly, well, 87 uh, billion US dollar, if I'm not, if I'm correct. <laughs> and um, there's also requirement for temporary relocation for people who live in the um, design plan for the super levy projects. So this has, re has created the, um, well, some opposal from the residents as well. However, the government uh, insisted in implementing the uh, projects, uh, the revised uh, super levies down to the 120 kilometers, focusing on the most densely populated areas to protect uh, people in these areas and also elevating lands and creating evacuation space for, for these areas. Um, they encounter several um, challenges been uh, implementing the super levies um, because of the scale of the projects and the time um, time consuming process of the projects that the government has to incorporate it with the redevelopment project along the along the river and um, there's although there's access to financial resource for the current progress but if because of the progress is very slow uh, if they're increasing the uh, target each year they might have their um, the access to a financial resource might be uncertain in the future. And also there's also the social conflict, uh, objections from residents and complaints for the long time frame and the necessary for the temporary relocation uh, for the residents. And uh, to summarize the two case studies from Ho Chi Minh City and Tokyo, uh, both of these cities, they have very different adaptation contexts. Uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, flooding is happening frequently every year, several times per year. But in the Tokyo lowlands area, because of the measures are already implemented and flooding rarely happens for the last five decades. Uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, um, rapid lamps of students uh, and climate change also exacerbate future flood risk. However, in the case of, of Tokyo lowlands, land subsidence has stopped due to the uh, regulations on the groundwater, groundwater extraction. And uh, currently in Ho Chi Minh City, they are starting to implementing adaptation measures, but in Tokyo, many of these measures are, are mostly completed. Despite this difference in the adaptation context, this, this showing some common adaptation trend in both of these cities. Ho Chi Minh City seems to follow the footstep of Tokyo in responding in the sense that they are, the measures are quite similar to Tokyo's adaptation to land subsidence in the past. And both cities adapted reactively to flooding or after flooding events. And uh, cities are very likely to, fo to follow the same approach of using hard engineering uh, measures to adapt in combination with the soft measure as well. So this, although this is a common adaptation trend, or in the case of Tokyo, um, the example in the case of Tokyo showing that adapt adaptation to meters of, of water level change is possible, but whether cities might um, adapt successfully to uh, flooding, in this case, if flooding, we can think about flooding induced by sea level rise. Um, it is important to think about how to overcome the constraints or the conflict in adaptation or in the process of implementation as well. And uh, I would like to conclude my presentation um, that I observed from the two case studies from my, study, uh, from my, um, case, from my studies, um, that adaptation reactively to flooding might result in the uh, using hard protection measures as the, um, the central role in responding to flooding. If cities want to expand their adaptation options, I will encourage cities to start the proactive planning towards uh, flooding adaptation. Thank you. Thank you very much. First thing I should say is congratulations on passing your PhD, you. Dr. K.O. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do we have any uh, questions for Dr. Robert? So, so Robert Nichols from University of East Anglia. I was Curious about if you don't build the super levies in Tokyo, what is the alternative? Because you seem to, it, it was presented as a, an approach that was going to be adopted. Now it seems to be challenged or contested. What are the alternatives? Well, the alternative for Tokyo is, is not that, there's not many options that are available. 
there are people who I was providing a discussion around the super levy that says some people kind of opposed to the super levy, but the, the government kind of insists and chose this approach to be the, um, the answers to their flood risk management. I asked them about the plan for alternative approach of uh, retreat or plan relocation. Plan like, uh, plans relocation is implemented in Japan, but not in the uh, populated areas. In, in this case, is the uh, low-lying areas, which is very populated. Uh, um, so for this case, they consider that is not necessary right now, and their approach is to protect, to make it safe for people to live here, not to require them to leave to move to other areas and uh, to rebuild the whole area. I hope that answered the question. <laughs>